Well, when the program was over last night, I did watch the remainder of the debate. And I have some observations that might be a little different than most people. Nikki Haley is a liar. She's been lying about Ron DeSantis' position on energy. She's been told she's lying, and she keeps lying. She lies about her own positions when it comes to Communist China. She was celebrating the Communist Party officials for years and years as governor. And she would do virtually anything to have their investment in the state of South Carolina. Her response is, again, to attack DeSantis is doing the same, which is a lie. Everybody in Florida knows it. She says she's pro-life. She was never a big pro-life governor or pro-life supporter. So she's lying about that, too. And I can go down the list. That's why the Wall Street Journal is slobbering all over her today. Because the Wall Street Journal is not a conservative editorial page. It's not leftist. But it promotes Peggy Noonan and her ilk. It used to trash the Tea Party in 2010. It used to promote an amendment to the Constitution. Thou shalt have, or thou shalt have open borders. Of course, it, it doesn't apologize for that position in the past. It's called the Wall, Wall Street Journal, not the Main Street Journal. And she's being promoted by essentially three groups. The Republican establishment. Bush individuals, as well as Democrats in the media. And billionaire Republican donors who hate Donald Trump. When people talk about Nikki Haley, they talk about the superficial how she responded to Ramaswamy, what she said about Trump, what she said this, what she said that. You notice she never runs on her record. She runs from her record. She didn't answer the questions about her close economic ties with communist China. She went on the attack. I've been calling her George Bush in a dress. I guess Ramaswamy's people have heard me about Cheney with high heels, but that's not it. It's George Bush in a dress. She's an establishment, moderate Republican. Now, some people might be looking for that. And this is what I wanted to say about that. The country is dying. We're in the ICU. We can't afford to have a Bush, Christie, Sununu, McConnell, Republican in the White House. We will not turn this country around. We'll have a respite from the radical left, but we will not make progress, not one inch of progress, in pushing our agendas. That is a problem. And so the reason people like Donald Trump isn't because they're stupid. Is it because they're hypnotized? Is it because they're MAGA, radical MAGA? It's because they saw how he governed for four years. And his substance was outstanding. Peace in the Middle East. A border that was more secure than any time since Dwight Eisenhower. An economy that was growing and expanding and creating wealth and opportunity for Americans. 
normalcy when it came to issues like transgenderism and critical race theory. The same media that is pushing a moral equivalency between the Hamas terrorists and the democracy in Israel is the same media that did, has, and continues to try and destroy Trump. The reason why many of us like DeSantis as a governor is because he can run on his record. People moved to Florida in droves. They still are. People speak with their feet. Nikki Haley speaks with her mouth. That's fine. But people weren't rushing into South Carolina because she was governor. South Carolina wasn't even thought about when people were thinking about where shall I move? Because Nikki Haley was one of a mass of Republican governors who basically manage as best they can the state. But they don't make any forward movement. They don't make any progress. South Carolina is a largely Republican state. She even had it easy. And she accomplished almost nothing. Ron DeSantis wins by the skin of his teeth, and he doesn't play rhino, he doesn't play it safe. He governs the state as a constitutional conservative. And so is attacked by the Wall Street Journal. Why? Because the Tea Party movement, the Reagan Revolution, the Trump Revolution, none of these things would have happened if the Republican establishment had its way. The DeSantis victory in Florida, none of these things would have happened. He had to win a primary against a rhino. And yet when conservatives finally win, they're extraordinarily popular. The problem conservatives have, whether it's Barry Goldwater or Ronald Reagan, three attempts to get the nomination of the Republican Party, or Donald Trump is a conservative by common sense, not by philosophy, or Ron DeSantis in Florida, the problem they all have is the Republican establishment, the Republican billionaires, who stop them, who try to stop them, who fight them. Once they muscle through, they do okay. Even now, we have Karl Rove out there saying, if it's Biden, Trump, it'll be the most disastrous election in American history. A rhino, establishment. Chris Christie spends all his time appearing in front of Republicans, trashing Trump. What is the point of that? Nikki Haley was a Trump appointee. She was not on the national scene but for Trump. And she said she wouldn't run against him if he decides to run. But there she is running against him, even though he decided to run. So what, right? And I'm no Ramaswamy fan in the least. I know a charlatan when I see one. That said, when he pointed out on TikTok, Nikki Haley going on about all the things she's going to do about TikTok, And to protect all the children from TikTok. It was absolutely legitimate for him to mention. And he didn't do it in a disrespectful way. And he didn't attack her. And he didn't attack her daughter. To say, you haven't even dealt with that in your own family. Your daughter's on TikTok. And she calls him a scum? Really? If we want to win the next election, and we must, we have to ignore these commentators. We have to ignore these operatives who are on cable and elsewhere 
who spent their entire lives feeding from the the ruling class and the establishment? We have to reject these people. Gerald Ford lost against Jimmy Carter, for crying out loud. But my concern is, we can fight the Democrats and the Marxists and the Islamists. But how do we deal with the fifth column in the Republican Party? That seeks to purify the party. Whether they're in the minority or not, they don't much care. So that they can continue. They go on the media. They can continue to make money, hold office, be called honorable. That's been the problem for Republicans, for conservatives. We have a Republican Party that hates its conservative base. That hates its conservative base. I see these Bush guys always throwing Reagan's name around. Rove does it. Rove was never a Reagan guy. Christie does it. Christie was never a Reagan guy. Sununu does it. Sununu's family, they were never Reaganites. Why don't they talk about George H.W. Bush? Why don't they talk about George W. Bush? I have nothing against those men personally, past and present. Nothing. But they didn't do anything. Certainly not anything that mattered. The great change among presidents, the greatest Republican presidents, were men who were leaders. Leaders. Abraham Lincoln didn't try and figure out 15 different ways on slavery that would avoid an all-out war. Calvin Coolidge didn't try and figure out 50 different ways to expand the economy. Ronald Reagan didn't try and figure out 50 different ways to defeat the Soviet Union and so forth. Some things you do because they're right. The Republican media, Republicans in the media, notice I didn't say conservatives, want us to change our views on abortion. We're getting our asses kicked on abortion, they tell us. Well, we are. For two reasons. Number one, when it comes to that issue, Republicans become illiterate, incapable of speaking and explaining. Number two, the Democrat Party billionaires are all in on abortion on demand, right to the end. Hakeem Jeffries just said, no restrictions whatsoever on abortion. Republican billionaires, many of them agree with that. I can't tell you how many times I've had some of them and other wealthy Republicans come up to me and say, can't we just drop the social issues? In other words, the cultural issues. I've never used that phrase, social issues. I've always called them cultural issues. Nikki Haley says, drop it. And it's not just with abortion. It's with Disney. It's with the classrooms. The Peggy Noonans. Same thing. Peggy Noonan was never involved in Reagan's primary campaign. She came on later after he got elected. She worked for Dan Rather. She hates Netanyahu. She hates DeSantis, of course. She promoted Chris Christie. But nobody wants Chris Christie. He's up there because the Democrats keep sending him small donations. Small donations. Nikki Haley said something. I think it was in response to either Tim Scott or Ron DeSantis. She said, we can't build our Navy. We don't know how many ships we need because of our massive debt. Does that sound like a leader to you? That's not what Reagan said. You have to reprioritize the spending in the federal government. That's hard to do. So more goes to defense and and less to climate change. Because we have to do both if we're going to survive now. We have to do both if we're going to survive. Ramaswamy is... 
a foreign policy illiterate. It's not about neocons. It's not about that stuff. He's a foreign policy illiterate. He does his best imitation of George McGovern. 